This is number seven in my full collection video. I'm gonna go over uh, a whole bunch of slip joints, uh, these and three other trays of slip joints that aren't in the super high uh, expense category, but in the uh, sentimental and um, sort of budget friendly uh, category. And then after this, I do my uh, final video, which will be all of my large fixed blade knives. Actually, that'll be the second to last video because then I have to do one with swords because uh, it wouldn't be fair to leave the swords out. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there with this uh, full collection uh, video. It's been it's been dragging on, uh, but it's it's good for me to do. It's been fun to do. So uh, let me show off these here. Um, first, I'll start with this. Uh, I keep my um, the knives I don't have locked up. My uh, Victorinoxes, my case knives, um, my Rosecraft knives, my Buck knives, my Rough Rider knives. I keep them in either cigar trays or a cigar box like this, or these trays that my girls had from their toys when they were babies. And they have like wooden, well, I'll show you later. Uh, they, they look a little bit like they were made just for storing slip joints. Uh, but they weren't, they were made for kids' toys. Okay, let's get started. Okay, this is a Buck Stockman, medium Stockman. I got this, I think this was, was a Walmart exclusive with that brown jig bone. Got this uh, back when you could peruse in my area, you could per peruse the knives at Walmart. Uh, now they keep them behind a counter and in the boxes, so you have no idea what they have. They just don't care. Okay, I don't want to... All right, so here is a buck. This is a mini toothpick or a small toothpick. And I got this uh, also at Walmart. Let's see, here is a an old timer. This is great, this little solo. Uh, great snap on this. Really nice. Uh, I think I need to get more old timers though. I don't find the um, that saw cut brown Del Rin too compelling. It's a little bit ugly, I think. Uh, I've seen them with bone. Uh, I'd like to get an old USA made one with bone. Uh, but Old Timer is a brand that is now interesting me, I don't know, a little bit more. Okay, uh, here's a Boker. This came as a, uh, this is a Boker pen blade. Pen blade meaning it has a, a main blade and then a smaller blade on the opposite end. This one is sharing the same spring, so it's nice and thin. I got uh, this from a guy I was buying a larger folding hunter from, Boker, and he just threw this in. Great little knife. Here is a, I think they call this, this is a buck pen knife. It's got a name. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but these little tiny hollow ground blades are like razor blades. That coping blade is ridiculous. This little knife, uh, I bought it, you know, on a lunch break. I had a knife Jones. Uh, went into Walmart again, bought this for, I don't know, eight bucks or whatever it was at the time. And uh, it actually turned out to be a really great little knife. Uh, like that one. This one <laughs> is one that my grandfather gave me. And this has gotten a, an immense amount of use over the years from me um, in my adult life. Uh, this is always on my desk and it's always poking and scraping and uh, just taking care of business here. Uh, this is like an old uh, Del Rin, I think, Jig Del Rin handle, and I think it's a catarag Cataragus. Oh, man, I should have brought my, my reading glasses. Anyway, this old tried-and-true friend is uh, a beloved knife in my collection, and uh, yeah, I love this thing. Uh, again, it's done so much work, and I love the single spring pen knife setup. Uh, this one is just kind of a random Swiss made, uh, though I don't know who made it. Enox, uh, Solingen, Germany. Sorry, I said Swiss made. Uh, just a little, just a little drop in the pocket uh, utility knife. I don't remember where I got that one. This one, uh, I found a backpack and it was someone's no, that's not this one. That's this one. This one my mom got for me as she used to work at the old age home um, flea market. And she got me a couple of knives. This is one of them. Cool little advertising Goodyear knife. 
uh, made by Imperial. You can barely see Goodyear right there. This thing you can tell was loved and used a lot because look at the shape of that blade. Very cool. Diamond wood and brass. Or I don't know if that's diamond wood. Uh, this is the one. This I found a backpack um, and it was someone's go bag. And it was full of stuff, and I, I advertised in my local, a couple of my local um, out, outfits here. Not outfits, but uh, local, you know, next door and those kind of things about found this thing. No one ever claimed it. It says Sheffield here, but also China. Who are you going to believe? Uh, but a nice little locking knife. This was in there. And uh, sorry to who, whoever, you know, missed out and dropped their bag. It's weird. I think it was probably stolen out of a car and then ejected somehow. Uh, so now we start this with this knife. This knife was the first knife ever. This is the one that started it all for me. My grandpa gave me this. This was his everyday carry at one point. Uh, it's a Camillus folder, uh, obviously. A Camillus camp knife and like a Boy Scout knife. So you got your main spear point blade, very you know weak spring on this. Um, but this was the tool as a kid that I always used. This all, always used. Um, this got a lot of use as a kid because I, I didn't have a drill, didn't have access to a drill. And I was always trying to make some sort of weapon or something. And a drill was frequently necessary. Uh, you got a can opener there. Oh, look at that, man. I bet that got, uh, used in some Catskill hunting at expeditions and, Fishing trips, nice big cap lifter and screwdriver. I love this knife. I will, I'll, you know, always cherish this. Um, but so these are some other knives in that category. Um, this one was one that my mom got for me at that flea market, and uh, it's very cool. Same sort of camp knife. You got a nice big spear. Uh, this is imperial, and then you've got. Uh, the cap lifter screwdriver. You got a can opener right over here. And then uh, a pen blade instead of an awl. Secondary pen blade instead of awl. This one is a boker. Uh, you know, this this pattern here, uh, this classic camp knife pattern with the punch blade or the awl, uh, the can opener and the bottle opener and the main blade is like a Swiss Army knife pioneer. Uh, it is like the basic uh, setup for a folding knife. And uh, this this Boker one is actually really good. I like this one. I've, this is one that I've actually pocketed. These generally tend to be too heavy and too thick uh, to carry EDC, but this one, that Boker is nice. This would also be a good one to EDC. This is the US service folder. Um, also has all the same tools. Uh, the can opener, uh, the... Uh, this is the can opener here, the can opener, the cap lifter screwdriver with a thumb stud, which is kind of cool, and then uh, the main blade, which is great, and then this is also an excellent awl. Got that same setup here. This one was my grandfather's. Uh, this is probably the most complete knife he ever gave me. Uh, most of the blades that he ever gave me were sharpened down to at least half. Uh, this has all the usual suspects, um, including the all that I love so much, but the can opener is weird. It's an old school can opener. Um, not exactly sure how you use that one. Uh, but Jig Delrin to look like bone. I'm pretty sure that's not bone. Actually, that might be bone. Another knife from my grandfather. This is usually like how the blades were when they came to me. Uh, this one's more of a stockman, actually, uh, with there's uh, that spade blade. And then way down here inside uh, is a very well-loved and used uh, pen blade. Here's the very modern version, the Camp King from uh, Rough Rider. Um, by comparison, it's, it's sort of uh, ham-fisted. Uh, a little bit thick. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, the, the can opener is not, or the, uh, the cap lifter is not the best, and I kind of doubt the can opener. Um, here's an old Camp King from back in the day. This was my grandfather's. Well-used, well-loved, very thin blade. 
Um, you got the opening layer here with the can opener and the cap lifter. And then back here, you got your awl. And then lastly, here's an electrician's knife. Swift Electric Supply, Nanuet, New York. My grandfather and grandmother lived in Rockland County, New York, and that's where this is from. Very nice walk and talk on this. I cleaned this up recently. Nice spear blade, and then you got your locking, um, like wire stripper, screwdriver, electrician's tool here with a liner lock. Very cool. Uh, Coubaton here, and here's a, a uh, cool little thing from erroneous blades and then here's my wingard wearables quill my little uh self-defense g10 knife and brass knuckles all right so let's look at some of these uh the victorinoxes here uh this is the junk drawer knife this is my um stockman from buck this is the large uh buck what is it the 3371 i guess I don't know numbers, guys, uh, but but the buck always has the main blade opposite the um, uh, the sheep's foot, which is unusual. And there's your spay. A good knife, um, kind of the big brother to the other one I showed you. I like the, the little one better. Uh, here's a Swiss Army knife, a Swiss Army. I mean, here's a Victorinox Swiss Army one. Um, I think this is different from a Solo because I think the Solo is 84 is that right 84 millimeters this is a 93 millimeter knife i love it great walk and talk this is 20 bucks uh what a great great value for for 20 bucks uh you got that stamped a locks very nice texturing um speaking of stamped a locks here is the a locks cadet uh, i got the cadet just recently again i had lost my old one on some sort of trip that was always a travel knife for me always ended up in my dob kit, uh, but disappeared. This is a brand new one, so it doesn't have uh, the knurled surface for the uh, nail tool that has uh, parallel ridges. Uh, works very well. Nice and thin, two thin layers. <clears throat> Usual awesome fit and finish from Victorinox. <clears throat> Okay, so I have several others, and I'm not exactly sure what they are, but this this one, I think it's the walker, or the hiker, maybe. You've got, uh, it's not the camper, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> You're saying, Bob, it's right there. <clears throat> but I'm pretty sure this isn't, actually. It's got a main blade and a pen blade. <clears throat> Standard uh, opening tools up here on that front layer. And then in the middle, it's got the saw. I really like that saw. This is great for cutting rattan collie sticks in half, these uh, these saws. And then of course, uh, they count this as a tool, the little key ring. You got your tweezers and toothpick, scale tools, as they call them in the Swiss Army world. You have a much used uh, corkscrew. In this case, it's all bent out of shape because uh, I used it. Not sure which one that is. I have uh, several others. This one here uh, rides in my backpack, I think. I think this might be a mountaineer maybe this one has uh the scissors it's got the main blade and a pen blade over here it's got the scissors large scissors love those scissors the regular opening tools uh but here yeah you got a scissor layer and a file layer metal file with a little bit of a saw and i find some of the names interesting <clears throat> one of them and i think it's the mountaineer has a file on it. And I'm like, shouldn't it, shouldn't the Mountaineer have a saw on it instead of a file? It's like, uh, you might find yourself sawing wood if you're a Mountaineer more than you do filing metal. But who knows, maybe you use that to uh, keep your chainsaw sharp. Okay, so here's your awl with that deep hollow ground area. No uh, sewing eyelet. So this one's old, uh, older. Uh, my brother gave this to me when he, um, when he gave me a base. This was in the case. I said, Vic, you left a Swiss Army knife. He said, it's for you. So... Uh, this rides in my backpack. Um, this is one that I dug out. I forgot I even had this one. Uh, not sure what it is, but it's got a main blade and a pen blade. Um, it's got a file. 
and a saw. So this is a really great one and scissors. So it's got, it's got all the best tools on it, if you ask me, or all, all of the most used tools for a Victorinox. And then it's got the opening. Uh, all of them uh, on the uh, opening side um, have, and by that, I'm just referring to the fact that these are tools that open stuff up. Um, but anyway, this is a pry, this is a screwdriver, this is a cap lifter, a wire stripper, and it always has a half stop. So you can really put torque into it if need be. This compact is a sweet one. This is the, it's a normal 91 uh, in length here, but it's got some great tools. It's got the main blade here. It's got this thing here, which is like, it's a cap lifter, wire stripper, screwdriver. They say you can start uh, with the corner, that you can start a Phillips with that. You can pry with it. You can use it as a can opener. As you can see, it's slightly canted. Uh, for scale tools, you've got the tweezers, the toothpick. Here you've got a pressurized ballpoint pen barrel here. And if you lift up the um, parcel hook on the back and you slide this in, and then put it down there you can actually use it to write and it's it's actually not too bad not bad at all actually uh you know in a pinch obviously this parcel hook there are plenty of videos on how you use that parcel hook there's a million uses for all of these tools actually there's some really creative guys out there doing stuff with their swiss army knives uh here you got the uh, corkscrew and then you've got a tiny little screwdriver for your glasses and then right in here, there's a little hole for a straight pin. Just in case you need a straight pin. Not sure what that's for, but I'm sure it'll come in uh, handy at some point. That's the compact. That's a great knife. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is a garage, uh, this is a junk drawer. Um, uh, what do you call it? Stalwart, I've had this one forever. I'm not even sure what this is called. Uh, the Leatherman side clip, because it's got a clip. Uh, and this one, the Uncle Henry. Uh, this is such a great, I love this one. I didn't have edges on the blade. I finally put edges on them and uh, I love it. It's a medium stockman. I think it's older. I've been uh, attempting a little research on this. Great spay blade. All of these are now razor sharp. They took a great edge. And nice long California clip, great snap on these. Uh, when you see, great snap, um, and really nice stag handle, stag alon handle. I think that's fake stag, but wow, it looks really great. I love this knife. This is I'm really into Stockmans. I'm digging the Stockman knives uh, recently, and uh, it was nice to find that one and realize I could put an edge on it. Oh, two here. On the keys, I keep the Super Champ. That's got a pen uh, in a pinch. You can take that. You can also pull it out. Um, but it's got a uh, drop point blade. It's got this tool. This is a cool one. Uh, it's a cap lifter, wire stripper, and uh, Phillips. And that tiny little Phillips can get a, a decently sized Phillips screw started. Um, uh, unscrewed, anyway. The small scissors work great, as usual. Uh, you've got a nail tool for pushing back the old cuticles. I don't really use that. Or you could uh, spoon. Uh, back in the day, I'm sure they they had other uses for that. Uh, here is a small screwdriver with a ruler on it. Kind of cool. And then here you got a great little Warncliffe blade. Great little Warny surprise blade there. And then this uh, nail. This is the knurled kind of nail file. I kind of like that a little bit better. And then I missed a tool here. This one, this cool little package opener. Kind of a menacing little tool. Uh, also toothpick on that. And then of course I have the Swiss Army SD on my work keys. Um, you got the nail file, the small screwdriver, the master blade, which annoyingly comes out uh, on the key ring side. And then you've got your tweezers, toothpick, and then small scissors. This is a great little thing to have on the keys. All right, next up. I'll do my case knives. 
Uh, this is basically how I keep my case knives, and this is basically in my junk drawer of my dresser. I have a great big dresser with lots of drawers, and one of them is devoted to knickknackery. And uh, here we go. All right, so uh, continuing on the Swiss Army knife theme, here's the uh, Recruit. This is a great little knife. It's a small, it's an 84 uh, millimeter knife. You've got your pen blade and your master blade here. And then you just have the standard uh, tools here for opening stuff. Great snap on these. I love the half stop. Um, you got your tweezers and your toothpick. This beauty has been to Bolivia twice and to Punta Cana twice and, you know, uh, rode around with me everywhere. Uh, here is a great one. This is the Alox 93 millimeter, excuse me, uh, Pioneer X. The Pioneer is like those camp knives over there that has the awl, the master blade, and the opening tools. And this is a great awl, by the way. Comes straight out. And then it's got these tools here that we're used to seeing uh, up front. And then this, what makes it an X, is the, ah, it's so hard to get with my, I just clipped my nails. But that makes it the X, the large scissors. So when you have the Alox models, you're gaining in cool, but you're sacrificing the scale tools. So that bothers some people. Um, it, I kind of wish they would figure out a way. I mean, it's 2024 already. We should be able to figure that out, but I don't know. Until then, it's not a deal breaker. All right, starting into the cases after this little uh, um, branded Victorinox Lubrizol. Um, this is a little classic SD. doesn't have a key ring. It's got the nail tool. This is like a corporate giveaway gift from back in the day. Drop it in your pocket. What a cool, man, those were the good days, right? When you could have these little, uh, and then you got your tweezers and your toothpick, which I haven't even touched because this was not mine, <laughs> obviously. Uh, my mom got this one for me at that little thing. All right, let's let's uh, let's start with the cases. Here's the Tony Bowes designed uh, beauty. I love this thing. This is the Swayback Jack in SV, and I think that's my, I don't remember what the bone is, molasses bone maybe? Really nice uh, half stop and walk and talk. Both very sharp. Uh, this one less of a patina because it gets less use. Beautiful bone. I I I'm one of those guys that loves case. I it sucks when you get a bad one. It does indeed. But I really love their knives, and they uh, they it's their the look of the knives, the feel of the knives. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of uh, quality control problem but uh so here is the peanut this one is i bought from my local hardware store that sells case knives i like to do that every once in a while uh and they have the brown delrin they also have the amber bone but not in cv in stainless and i collect the amber bone but in cv great little knife drop in the pocket you forget it's there until you need it even if it rides sideways it doesn't bother you uh, here's a cool one this is uh Beautiful purple. I got this one. Someone gave me a gift certificate to Sears, and I was basically stocked on everything else. And I was like, let's see if they have any case knives. And uh, that says Purple purple Passion Coralon. Purple Passion Coralon. All right. Let me, let, me, let me back that off a little. Okay. So same thing. And you've got the half stops. These are stainless. That uh, True Sharp Surgical Stainless Steel or whatever. Case, uh, I like the shield in nickel silver. It matches the bolsters beautifully. Last up, this one is a great one. I got this uh, on the secondary to match, kind of to go with this. Beautiful CV. Came wickedly sharp. Whoever owned this put incredible edges on these blades. And also, very nice patinas on these on these blades. I always like to say, you hear me say it all the time, but case knives um, always seems to pay a little bit more mind to the making of their uh, chrome vanadium or carbon steel blades. Uh, I find those knives always have a really good fit and finish. Uh, this one here, uh, I got at Dick's Sporting Goods years ago. I love this knife. You can, this has kind of come back into the making. You can buy this again. It went away for a while, I think. I felt like I couldn't find it. 
Uh, but this is just the uh, medium um, jackknife. Much like that little brown busted up folder uh, that my grandpa gave me that has done so much service. This is the other one that has done so much of the dirty jobs just, just from being around. Um, and uh, this one is generally in... Uh, does the upstairs dirty jobs and the other one downstairs but uh, love this knife i love that black synthetic handle next is the purple barn door jig bone um, barlow this is in true sharp so that's a, the stainless steel love the look of that barlow um oftentimes i don't like uh shields with barlows but this is small and sort of tasteful enough that uh I don't feel offended by it, but I love that color. That purple is beautiful. And then especially right next to that brass. Oh, see, they, they do really beautiful work, I think, with, their, uh, with the dyeing of their, of their bone. Gorgeous clip point blade. I love that. Very nicely shaped. Uh, came with a jagged edge. Uh, these have all, all the cases I've gotten lately come sharp, but they are so toothy. They need to be sharpened just to get rid of the, one of them even had a burr. So like, you know, I get it. Some people, why some people are not crazy about them, but I just am. And uh, I like old ones. I like new ones and something about them. Very American. Uh, here is one that I mistakenly said was a, um, this is an exclusive, but, n or I got it as an exclusive from, Deadwood knives, I think it was, uh, but now I've been seeing it on Amazon. So I, I think you can get this elsewhere. I don't think this is an exclusive. If it was at first, I don't think it is anymore. But anyway, it is a chrome, uh, a carbon steel, chrome vanadium steel, uh, medium stockman with that black synthetic, which is so nice. This is a Workman series knife or, or it's finished as such, as such on the blade. But this one here is, you know, much more refined. Um, I love that Turkish clip, long, sinuous blade, very sharp. Uh, this one was the only new, oops, sorry, the only new case that I've gotten recently that didn't have that sort of super jagged edge. And then this one is great because it has a punch tool. So a uh, very stout spring on this. Love this little case knife. And uh, I'm a big Stockman fan, and I want to keep getting more and more, more and more Stockman. Here is the uh, Amber Jig Bone Chrome Vanadium Canoe. And I love that uh, Indian in the canoe there. I think that's so cool. This reminds me of an old time. This is a real old timey knife to me. Uh, you know, the canoe is called the canoe because of the shape of the, of the handle. It looks kind of like the boat. Canoe almost always has a master spear blade and a small pen blade. I can't remember seeing it any differently, actually. Sometimes I guess you see just a single blade. Um, I got my daughter a tiny little Rough Rider um, canoe, or I gave her my tiny little Rough Rider canoe, so you won't see it in this video. Uh, and I came in to her room over Christmas break and saw her doing a craft, and she had that knife open on the floor. And though, I had to give her a little lecture on the safety. I was very proud she was using that knife. Um, so yeah, canoes are great knives. This here is the Sodbuster Junior from Case with the CV blade steel and the yellow Delrin. Love this, I like the whole line. I love the yellow Delrin line. And the yellow Delrin to me looks so old fashioned. I love it. And then the way the CV steel patinas also you know, this knife was made sometime in the 2000s, but to me, it looks old. Here is another knife from that uh, Workman series where you can see the, um, or the Workman style blade anyway. They always have better t points because they're not tumbled for a long time. But anyway, this is from that hardware store that sells the Brown Delrin case. Uh, I just love this. This is a great little knife. I recently uh, got it shockingly sharp. It's very, very sharp. Makes a great steak knife. Um, and then you can get this with really pretty hand, handle scales and uh, make it a very nice uh, special occasion kind of steak knife. Brown Jig Del Rin. You got the copper 
uh, copper liners. This is a very nice knife. This is a very nice knife. Okay, uh, here is one that my wife got for me. At the, I think it was the Father's Day after my first daughter was born. Uh, it is a case trapper. So you've got the large clip point blade. No half stop. And then you have the large... Um, these are both hollow ground, large spay blade for spaying animals, something I've never done. Um, and this nickel silver bolster, white bone is so nice. I love you, daddy. That's nice too. Trapper, a very, very common model. And here it is with that yellow, ah, I hurt my, uh, <laughs> cut it too short. Uh, this is that yellow uh, CV line up here uh, so that is the large clip point hollow ground chrome vanadium or carbon steel with that beautiful patina on it and the classic delrin yellow delrin here's one of my faves uh, this is new ish uh, this is the jumbo stockman uh, also from that amber jig bone uh, series. This one is also a nice food knife. This has a great patina working. I love that patina. Chrome vanadium, obviously, and uh, this is a, such an amazing blade here. This uh, a sheep's foot blade just zips through cardboard like it ain't there. This is a great knife for doing all these kind of chores. Um, it, this did a lot of box breaking down over Christmas, and then this has kind of remained very sharp and pristine and uh, when I go to spay a raccoon or something, this blade will come in very handy. Uh, but I love the Jumbo Stockman, and I'd love to get more. I got to stop saying that. I should be happy with what I have. All right, here is a medium, beautiful uh, medium toothpick in the, let me try and get this right, Sunset Autumn Honey Whiskey Bone. I can't remember what it's called, something like that. Whiskey Sunset Honey bone something carbon steel interesting that they put it on the bolster i don't hate that so much case double x i i have yet to sort of uh do my homework on the dating i know i i watch a lot of people who will show that and then talk about the dating system haven't quite figured that out uh, I, I need to watch the many videos out there on the subject but just beautiful beautiful uh work here i love that dyed bone and the deep jigging and just the color is just beautiful. So up my alley. Love it. All right, this is the Carhartt back pocket. This is another Tony Bowes design, and I love that it's big enough to have a lanyard on it. Comes with this braided lanyard. It says case there, it's like a piece of pewter. And then you got this beautiful half-stopped clip point blade. Looks a bit like a Benny's clip, kinda. Um, just beautiful, that long swoop and the machine ground swedge. Um, and the kick, I love the shape of the kick and the sharpening toil. It's just a good looking knife. And these are pretty hard to find. Uh, you can find them on the secondary market sometimes. I think people hold on to their back pocket knives. Um, Carhartt, this was uh, this is brown G10. This is uh, a great knife, uh, but probably the least pretty back pocket knife I've ever seen um, with that kind of baby shit brown G10 color. Uh, here is the large uh, sod buster here from Case with the, this is from the Workman series, American Workman, with that blue Del Rin, which I find quite fetching. Very large, uh, 3.75 inch, uh, true sharp stainless steel blade, very sharp. This did duty in my car for a long time as the dedicated muffin knife. We would get muffins on the way to school. I would cut them in half for the girls and dole them out. And uh, this was the knife. That did duty. Uh, it used to be, it used to have a lot of wobble and it, it has tightened up and and uh, learned how to fly right over these years. So great knife, great knife. All right, one last trick. Oh wait, what am I talking about? I missed over here. Um, okay, so over here we have this cool one that my brother got me along with the K-Bar he got me on my 50th birthday. And this is a, a cool old Camco knife, beautiful, uh, and wickedly sharp. This thing got so sharp. Um, carbon steel clip point blade, nice uh, snap on this. Nice walk and talk on there. And then here in classic jackknife form, jackknife means that all the blades come out of one side. 
pen knife loosely. Uh, they come out from other sides. A uh, little pen blade there. A great little synthetic handled knife. This is one of the newer Queen knives. This is a great knife. I kind of wish I got a whole bunch of other knives when they were available. Now they're kind of hard to find, but really nice honey colored bone there. Uh, nicely finished, great transitions, uh, like you would expect from a more expensive knife. This was like 25 bucks or something. Uh, brass liners, uh, very nice blade, pretty darn sharp. China, I'm not sure what kind of steel this is. S some store of stainless steel, uh, really great walk and talk. Reminds me a bit of the uh, 38 Special from um, GEC. Uh, this is the large Boker uh, Folding Hunter. This is the one uh, where that small Boker pen knife came for free. Uh, this one also came with a leather pouch that I do not have with me right now. Very thin behind the edge, very slicey, uh, sharp, sharp blade. And you can see the tree brand sort of worn away. 2020 is not the year. Uh, I guess that's the model number. Um, nice nickel silver bolsters. Uh, I can't tell if this is bone. I think this is bone. And then over here, we have that nice skinning blade, very sharp. Also pretty unused. The whole thing is pretty unused, but old. Very nice knife. Boker. Uh, here is my Buck 110. Kind of lives among the traditional knives here because it is, it is the, the original tactical folder, a redneck tactical folder, as uh, Rob Bixby said. Uh, I like how heavy this thing, it's a bit of a boat anchor, I gotta say, but it, it's confidence in hand, as they say. Uh, you got brass liners, uh, integral with the blast, brass bolsters, that's what makes it so heavy. Steel spring, full length steel spring, uh, with the lock way at the back of the back lock, as opposed to like cold steels, which are up here. Um, very nice patina on the brass, great 420 blade steel. I mean, it's the heat treat, even if it's not a Paul Boss heat treat, these buck knives come razor sharp and just, they keep going. Like uh, they know how to heat treat even substandard steel really well. Uh, that is composite wood. I think they call it diamond wood. And I love that classic clip point shape. Next up, this is a pretty new acquisition. This is the cinnamon stag bone, um, large jackknife. They call this, I think they call this a cattleman's knife. Um, from Rough Rider. And uh, it's this stag, cinnamon stag bone handle series is carbon blade steel. So got a nice patina on this one working. That's all from food. I think food makes the best, best patina. Half stop and a great little swedged um, pen blade there. Nice bolsters, good walk and talk, good spring. Lazy to the half stop in both directions. Like it doesn't really snap to the half stop, but it snaps shut. And uh, this is is a great knife. And with the Rough Rider knives, they are really making great, great quality knives. And they're so inexpensive. They're hard to resist, especially if you are um, wanting to check out all the different patterns there are, you know, because they make so many different patterns. Uh, this is the Rosecraft Knives French Broad Jack. And this is a great one, a great user, that very useful worn clip blade. Also very handsome with the swedging up front and uh, that diamond-like tip will get you into those uh, resistant clamshell packages and other things you need to puncture. D2 blade steel, very sharp, comes very sharp. That really nice sharpening notch there and plunge grind, that sharpening notch matches up with a stop pin right there at the tip of my finger. And uh, that's what makes this a modern slip joint. Uh, besides the fact that it's in modern materials, uh, but it's not using the kick here and the height of the kick to determine uh, when the blade stops. It's using that blade stop to determine when the blade stops. I really like this one. I, I think the uh, cherry red bone is absolutely beautiful. Rosecraft does an amazing job, not only on dyeing their bone, but building their knives and they all, I have four of them now and three of them have just outstanding fit and finish. This happens to be the one that doesn't have the greatest fit. Um, the transitions here, I can feel them all. 
Uh, it's like the bone swelled up on this knife after, uh, after manufacture. Um, from certain angles, you can see a little bit of space here. Uh, they, it's like it pulled away a little bit, but it is definitely not a deal breaker. I was just thinking, oh, I'd love to get a pristine one, but that would just be um, wretched excess. I don't need another one. Uh, this one works great. And uh, it's just a little bit of fitment issue. And uh, you know what? That's a first world problem I can live with. Great walk and talk on this beautiful knife. Next, brand new to me uh, right now as I record this is the Lusahatchee Jack. And this is one I've been wanting ever since I saw it and it sold out immediately the first run. And uh, it's another Rosecraft Blades knife. Great walk and talk, great pull. I'd say it's about a seven uh and just ah i love it i love it uh okay so you've got a i keep bumping this i'm sorry you've got a very british looking um clip point blade here with that deep belly and that deep descending point uh you know where you can use that point for various um uh, utility tasks without having to bend your wrist uh to to get that point where you need it to go so a great compromise of a clip point, you know, it gives you a, a lot of what you want out of a Warren Cliff. The low point, uh, the accelerated cutting, except it gives you that belly. Beautiful orange bone. I love that dragon scale jigging. That's what they call it. Some people say it looks a bit like a, um, like deer, who, deer tracks. Nice contouring. Oh God, look at that orange. Steel liners on the back makes it all look like one piece. They do such a beautiful job putting these together. There's Andy Armstrong's Maker's Mark. Single fluted bolster, just outstanding. Uh, here is the o Okosi, o I don't know how you pronounce it, O-C-O-E-E -E Kayak. And this is one incredible and unique looking knife. So you've got the same sort of shape as a canoe in the handle, but uh, it's bare end here and you get this really cool Warncliffe. I mean, what is that? That's a, it's not a Warncliffe. What is that? A sheep's foot, I guess, with a belly. I mean, it's just a modified whatever and it's downward angled like that. And man, that makes for great cutting, great cutting. Um, and you, so you still have the point way below center line. You have it below your knuckles. Uh, so you don't have to do anything to get the point where you need it to go, but you still have that really nice curved surface for cutting. Um, if you're if you're cutting through um, cardboard, say you're cutting down straight cardboard like that, that material is getting getting trapped right in there, and you're just using that very thin D2 to slip right through it. This is a great knife. Oh, and beautiful looking bone there. I know, I know. I say beautiful too much, I know. Uh, but I'm, I'm really impressed with these knives. The fit and finish on this one is outstanding. You definitely need the nail neck to open it, at least I do. And uh, again, you've got that gorgeous red bone. All right, last of the Rosecrafts and, and this, oh, well, I'll show you those Apinels too. This is the Awanata, a great little keychain knife. I had it on my keychain for a minute, but this beautiful G10 was getting marred by my keys, so I took it off and put uh, that Swiss Army knife on there. Uh, but little paracord, drop it in the pocket, you forget it's there, but really great and pretty stiff spring action there. So for a small, wickedly sharp little Warncliffe, uh, you can use this with real peace of mind. I mean, it's not gonna close, and if it by chance does, you got that half stop. It comes in six different colors, I believe, and those are 15 bucks, amazing value. Uh, I have some Apinels here. Um, the only one that I haven't uh, altered is at work. To, but so I made a little straight razory one here. This is this was a number eight. Did a little carving. Um, this one I kind of did the same thing. This was a number eleven. They get pretty big. Uh, I thought this was kind of cool, but never ever ever have I used it or carried it or done anything with it since it was a project knife. This is the Apinel that actually gets a lot of use. Uh, this is a number 10 and I altered it, you know, did that sculpting on the handle. And this makes for a great 
steak knife. Going out to dinner, steak knife. Nice big four inch blade there. And then this is awesome. Quite a surprise. This is the Kudu uh, slip joint from Cold Steel. That's like a four and a half inch blade. Big, cheap, good, solid, stout, great knife. I love this thing. Uh, this was a dresser knife for me for a long time, just sitting on top of the dresser. Um, and I love it. And the reason I said it's a surprise is because I had the first one with the ratchet lock and the ring and it broke on my very first use, that ratchet. So, uh, all right, one last tray, one last tray and it's a goodie. All right, <clears throat> these are my Rough Riders. Now, some of you are either sticking around or some of you are leaving because some people don't like Rough Riders, but uh, I think most of us are pretty into them. All right, let me start here. Not a Rough Rider. This is a Buck 112 with that uh, aftermarket easy open thumb stud. Love the Buck 112. It uh, gets a lot of use sitting on my... This sits on my desk just over to the right of me. And uh, so this knife gets pulled out and used quite a bit. Great knife. That's just in the 420 steel. Here is the Culpepper Barlow, a large Barlow from um, Kershaw. Is it a Barlow? I don't know. I guess it's not. I, I always thought it was, but a Barlow would be smaller and the, and the um, Barlow would have a handle that big for that bolster, probably. Anyway, um, this has... Uh, this has uh, 8 CR13 MOV, really, really nice transitions. Everything, the manufacturing of this is awesome. And I saw that Kershaw just came out with nice brass liners. They just came out with a red bone version of this. Um, if you're on the fence for 25 bucks, go for it. They're really excellent. Here's an old um, Imperial Barlow branded for the NRA. Nice and thin. Uh, not much of an edge. I could get these screaming sharp right away, but this is more Barlow size. All right, here's a Rough Rider Barlow uh, with white bone. Now, I had two just until yesterday. Uh, the other one was in red, red jigged bone, and I gave that to a friend at work. Um, love the white bone. Always been a fan of white bone. No half stop, super thin, um, <clears throat> sharp blades. These 440A blades are wickedly sharp. And honestly, yeah, 440A does me just fine for my for my uh, everyday tasks, so to speak. Great fit and everything is just smooth. Man, uh, Rough Rider, you get incredible value for, for your money. This is a cool marbles. This was given to me by um, Mike Latham. He had this laying around, thank God. Or thank Mike. Yeah, very happy he gave this to me. I love it. Looks like a dill pickle here. Big, uh, big. what do you call it? Uh, elephant's toe. Two different springs, but like a big fat pen blade. You've got the spear, small spear on this side. The large spear on this. Of, of the three of this style knife that I have, this is probably the most usable. It actually feels pretty good in hand. Uh, the last one is kind of ridiculous. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. Here's a white bone version of the same thing, marbles. I really like that white bone. It's very nice, even though it's cracking, I don't care. It's a very cheap knife, and you can see how it stayed in the box for years before I bought it. Um, but these two are basically the same knife and are great in hand, feel really nice. And I say that because uh, they're able to get that pen blade, that secondary blade, low enough in the handle, especially this one. But it, it's still a useful, useful knife when you pull it out. And you can still use it with that big blade tucked in there. Uh, so last, now this one's a little ridiculous. I got it because uh, I sort of fell in love with the, that teal colored bone, uh, whatever that blue bone. But this one has that ugly blade. <laughs> it's nice. It works. Uh, it's a it's a pretty good blade all in all. It's very tall and thin and slicey. I just think it's bruta. I think it's ugly. I also don't like the R uh, on the bolsters. It's too much. If you have this, leave the bolster alone. If you have the bolster like this, forget the shield. And then this ridiculous blade over here. I mean, it's nice. It's a nice worn cliff, but then when you hold it, like this is like not comfortable at all. 
So to me, this is more of a collection knife and probably paid like 15 bucks for it. But again, really nice fit and finish. And by that, I mean, all, everything is fit in there perfectly. You feel it. And then you look at it and it's finished nicely, like fit and finish. They're two different things. Um, here is the white bone nautical knife with the locking spike. I love that locking spike. I mean, in a pinch for a fight, can you imagine that guy getting hit with that? It locks in there uh, with this bail. You just pull the bail back, unlocks the knife. Uh, it has one of these over here, uh, Warncliffe, or sheep's foot blade, I mean. Uh, I don't think I've ever even bothered with that. Uh, cool knife, I just wanted a nautical knife, never had one, and uh, they call that a bill hook knife, I believe. This was also a gift from Mike Latham, the next couple were. Uh, cool, it looks like a powder horn knife, and uh, what is it, Bone long rifle, it says. Really nice lockup on this cheap Rough Rider. I mean, man, this knife is like really locked up solid. Um, if I carried this, I would probably run a little bit of sandpaper just along the edges, but really nice looking bone and a an all right shield. I'm not crazy about that shield. It's a little oddly placed. It feels like it should be up on the straighter portion of the handle, but you know, a, beggars can't be choosers, and B, I don't care that much. I like the knife. It's a cool knife. I like that powder horn shape. Uh, I love the large lady leg here um, in more ways than one. Uh, you've got a um, Rough Rider shield in the middle. You've got the um, pretty cheap imitation um, tortoiseshell. I say pretty cheap because you can see all the way to the liner. Like, there's not too much in the way to see all the way to the liner, but hey. Again, this was probably a $10, $12, $15 dollar knife when it was made. I think this is a pretty old one. Um, but you've got a really, like, no wobble, super quality on these damn things, man. Um, for such cheap, you know, inexpensive knives. And there you've got the lady leg. And I think you can pop a cork with that. Here is the tobacco bone. I think it's called tobacco bone. A large Texas toothpick. They have a really nice uh, shaped Texas toothpick blade. I love it. And uh, nice big blade, pretty good snap, pretty good spring on this. And then that beautiful steer horn shape. Texas toothpick, single flute, triple flute, and that cool uh, stepping or terracing there on the handle. Big granddaddy Barlow. Uh, this was the Ram horn, Ram's horn series. Ram's horn, horn bone, meaning it's bone that they have sculpted to emulate ram's horn. Nice big blade. Pretty good snap on this. This is I got this just because I wanted a granddaddy Barlow. Didn't want to find a case one, didn't want to spend that money because uh, I knew I wasn't going to carry it, but I just wanted a big, nice slip joint. And this definitely fits the bill. Very cool. And then let's see, these are not folders, so I'll leave those for another time. But this uh, is what I'll leave you with. This is a uh, Navaja, but a tourist Navaja. I love the shape of it, though. It is beautiful. You say, why is it a tourist Navaja? I, I just mean it's not, like if you look here at the back lock and everything, it's just molded. And it's on a, it's on a spring like a slip joint, which is hidden inside. And uh, it's actually pretty sharp. It's a good little knife, uh, but it, it, it ain't no Navaja. It's not locking open. And uh, But I would love to have a big giant one of these in, in real, you know, a real Navaja that was shaped just like this. Love it. I think a friend of mine got this for me on a trip to Spain. All right, everybody. Oh, 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 what about these over here, Bob? Okay, let me do it. Let me, let me move over here. I keep doing that. <laughs> All right, last, uh, last little group here. Here is a very small tobacco sampler knife, a great little knife, um, Rough Rider. I think this is kind of, what kind of, I don't know what the bone is on this, but great walk and talk on this cute little knife. I love this little knife. Not so crazy about its big brother that I have, but we'll get to that in a second. Very small uh, white bone Barlow. Great little fifth pocket knife or vest. If we were civilized men and wore three-piece suits all the time, I would drop this in the vest. That gorgeous little white bone. 
and brass liners. Here's a little six leaf knife that uh, Dave gave me. It's just been sitting around. I mean, this is where it, where it goes. Sometimes it does a little work. Here is a Rough Rider, um, very nicely done uh, trapper. Look at that beautiful blade. I'm not crazy about the double nail, uh, nail necks, but really great walk and talk on this and great blades on this. I like how this one swells out a little bit and how it's got uh, swedging on the spade blade. And then here you have alternating brass and bone. This was a gift from hmm, BJ Hill of Hilltop. Here's one of my finest Rough Riders. I love this one. That's like a honey bone. Beautifully done back here on the springs. Everything hafted perfectly. And uh, you've got the nice brass liners. Just a beauty, beautiful knife to look at. Great walk and talk on these clip point blades. Sow Belly Trapper. Sow Belly Trapper. Sow Belly is another uh, Tony Bowes invention, I believe. Uh, and then look at this. Is that not the best looking spade blade you have ever seen? I love the Rough Rider spade blades. They do some really cool stuff. They're doing great stuff with spade blades, man. Okay, sorry about that. We've got the uh, Micarta work knife. This one just was with me in Germany. And when I was in Cologne, I had this in my pocket, ready to pull out and use and pakal grip if need be. You know, you know, that's just how I think. Uh, same blade steel, except more of a working finish. Wickedly sharp. Nice uh, triple fluted bolsters and that sort of bright blue denim micarta. Another knife I'm happy to see a, a uh, lanyard hole on. Here's the Copperhead, Rough Rider Copperhead with the great, these are like mini folding hunters. So you got that skimming blade. Great walk and talk on this. And then there's your clip point. This is a great little knife that I, I just need to carry more. Nice brown jigged bone, beautifully done. Everything hafted perfectly. Rough Rider, man, I'm telling you. Uh, here, and, and these are older ones. These aren't even like Rough Rider reserves. Uh, so here's the Rough Rider, I don't even know what they call this, one arm lockback. So it's a lockback, but I wanted it for that one arm blade. Um, story goes that after the Civil War, there are a lot of people left with one arm. Uh, from war wounds and that for your jackknife, if you could have it open up easily on, say, the edge of your pocket or the corner of a table or anything like that, uh, it, would, it wouldn't require a second hand. No blade wobble on this. Great lockup. This is a really nice little knife. And this is another one. Most of these get very little attention. I might pick them up and play with them because they're right there at my desk. But other than that, Here's a really nice, I think this might be actual stag because uh, they're so uneven and, and it's probably stag bone though because uh, it's a rough rider and um, it's a stockman, very, very sharp. Um, there's your mane, there's your um, really, really nice sheep's foot, also very sharp. You can see evidence of blade rub. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I like this on stockmen, like real stockmen, where I don't mean that bucks aren't real stockmen, but they're all on three springs. So they're all, so the knife is wider and they all come out parallel. I like when they work to nestle the blades in like that. I don't care if they rub, actually. And there's your spay on a great angle there uh, for, ah, for any sort of scalpel-like usage. And then last, 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 last in this video is the Rough Rider uh, Green Micarta Tobacco Sampler Knife. And all I have to say about this one is, eh, I've been talking about Rough Rider's fit and finish. This is one of the bad ones. Like you look down the blade, you can see how it curves off, but then when it's in here, it's curved off to this side, which means there's something up with the blade. You can't, can't really bend it. It's like twisted or something. But anyway, you know, I probably paid 13 bucks for this. So what do you expect? Uh, I like the scalpel-like shape, though. All right, this has been an hour. Holy mackerel. All right, stay tuned for two more videos, large fixed blade knives and swords. All right, talk to you later.